Welcome back, everyone, to the Binding of Isaac Randomizer. We last left off with a uh, a victory as this character. Got one as this guy. Got one as this guy as well. I think we might as well try and go for a greed run today. We do have to get our greed machine up to, like, I think it's 500 coins to unlock greedier. So while we do have the easier side of the deal right now, why not just go for it here? Seed, by the way, is going to be ZNKX2B0G. We also... Uh, have to start doing challenges soon because those might unlock random things. I think unlocking a challenge is normal, but I think the unlock you get, oh, that's funny, from uh, beating that challenge is randomized. I'm, I'm not sure. I think when I beat um, Mom's Heart for the first time, I might have unlocked like the normal set of challenges. Again, like, it's been so long since my last time playing base game Isaac that really, uh, I have no clue. It's been very fun, though, to come back to uh, vanilla early game Isaac and kind of just, like, relive what that was like because, oh my god, there is a lot of stuff that I forgot about in this game. Uh, greed mode, or greedier mode, sorry, not being unlocked from the start is one of them. I actually haven't started out a file, um, like, to play Dead God without having greedier unlocked because I, I think i started playing um repentance on like an already beaten file from afterbirth plus which i think already gave me greedier regardless so i've never had to um besides the four player file like actively try and unlock the mode it sounds kind of weird because greedier mode is it's one of the most hated modes it probably is the most hated mode in isaac Yet it feels like, oh, these are very slow bullets here. Yet it feels like it's also the one I've played the most of. Uh, because believe it or not, when Afterbirth like, originally came out, I didn't get, uh, like, Platinum God. I got Platinum God on Afterbirth Plus, I think. Um, I did get, like, I think it was, what was it called back in Rebirth? The Golden God? Um, or just like a million percent, whatever that achievement was called in uh, Rebirth I got. I got the Rebirth lost, I got all the completion marks done um, as the Before Holy Mantle came out for the character originally, which I got them by holding R until I found Holy Mantle or other good items. But, uh, yeah, I never, like, Afterbirth was the one version that I didn't really grind out all the way through. Uh, near the end of AB Plus is when I finally got my uh, Platinum God for that version, so regular Afterbirth, I wasn't, like, a huge fan of it, I would say. I thought it was really cool. I, I liked seeing the new floor variations and Hush and all that kind of stuff, but, uh, I don't know. Something about just regular Afterbirth, like, didn't really incentivize me to want to go for 100%. I think I mostly just, like, messed around with breaking the game in that mode, because honestly, like, when are you not having fun breaking the game in early Afterbirth Isaac? It's, it's the mode where breaking the game um, is arguably the easiest to do. Okay, Spectral Tears, Mucormycosis. I mean, they're okay. Mucormycosis is a great item. I, I, I don't think Spectral Tears really matters that much in this mode. You know, can, I could be wrong. Maybe, like, shooting through rocks is just the most busted effect in the game. But I feel like uh, in this mode, I don't really care for spectral tears that much but anyways what i wanted to talk about today uh, and it's going to be a spoiler uh, kind of deal but i'm sure a lot of you by the time this video comes out have either already seen the movie or don't plan to i'm not going to go into like super big detail and spoil every plot point but i wanted to talk about a movie that i saw recently that i really really enjoyed one that i think is uh has made my new favorite genre like, genre crossover in movies, um, be horror and comedy. And here's why. I, I think there's no better crossover than a funny horror movie. And I saw a movie recently called The Menu, starring uh, Anya Taylor-Joy, uh, and it was fantastic. Now, I would say, I think I, I liked Barbarian a bit more. I think it was a, a better made movie and had a better payoff, but The Menu was something else, man. Like, first off, I talked about this in a Brotato episode. It might come out in a couple days, so you might hear a double uh, double speaking here, but first off, movie is very well shot. 100%, like, it's got a very nice color scheme. The lighting is really, really good in the movie. There's a shot where this guy is hanging over the ocean in a pair of angel wings. 
and they put like a spotlight on the guy like above the water and i gotta it, it looks just like amazing it, it kind of strikes you with a little bit of like fear but also like you don't want to look away because it looks so endearing it's it's very very amazing um second thing every actor in that movie uh and every character was really really well done there was not a single like bad performance in the entire movie and the only thing you can kind of consider to be like a quote unquote bad performance i guess i'll just take flight i know we already have spectral but why not is um like an intentionally not great performance it doesn't feel like the character is giving their all but they're not supposed to because their character is seen as this like you know unambitious person um in case we find like some kind of re-roll by chance uh, i guess we can hold on to this if we find like a restock machine inside of a um an item room maybe along those lines it could do something with that but i'm not gonna you know hedge my bets but it's great uh the the premise of this movie is that there's this very exclusive island and there's this chef that cooks on the island you really want to go there to eat his food because he makes the best food in the world and it's like very expensive to go there and this one couple uh anya taylor joy and her boyfriend are going to the island um for their anniversary and when they get there they notice there's a couple of things wrong like so number one is that the bringing anya taylor joy to the island was not part of the plan originally the guy was going to bring his ex but they broke up and now he started dating anya's character uh and when they get there and they realize that she's not you know uh she's a different name than the other girl that was on the invite they get a little bit upset like oh you're not you know miss westerfield you're uh you're margo okay that's interesting we were expecting a miss westerfield but i guess you're already here so you might as well stay with us and it was kind of weird because like normally it wouldn't matter who's there as long as it's all paid for but there's something wrong with that right it's like it's a little bit strange then they get into the restaurant and they meet like the head chef and the head chef's like staring at at margo like very weirdly um and it, it's kind of like creepy because you know she feels like she's not wanted there and she doesn't belong because her boyfriend's the one who's really into his cooking he's a huge you know uh, he loves cooking, loves food, and the chef is, like, his idol. She doesn't really know much about it and is not really, like, that into it. But this dude is just, like, super, super, you know, he can name every appliance they use, all the food. I mean, he's he's, he's a, a super fan, I guess. But uh, they start to notice, there's a couple of things wrong they start to notice. Like, the chef is weirdly, um, he's not rude, but he's very upfront. Like, in a way where you really wouldn't treat restaurant goers you want to leave you a good review. He's very, uh... It's just, it's not the what you would think. I'm gonna actually, I'm just gonna do this, dude. Why not? Yeah, you know what? That was probably worth the squeeze right there. We get a bomb back and we get some, uh, some keys too. We'll fight the boss. Not much worth buying in that shop right there. Um, some antics happen and, you know, he's kind of being a little bit rude. And then you, you meet the entire cast of characters eating at this restaurant. You got, like, a washed-up movie star. You got some, you know, big boy accountants. You got this old couple who has been going for years. And you got food critics as well. Um, I believe the food critic lady is played by Gillian Anderson, who is a fantastic actress and might be my favorite character in the movie. She plays kind of the role of, like, somebody, um, who can only critique art and can't make it and they repeatedly try and like sell themselves as like an elite like oh yeah he's using this this form of cooking that's super rare and hard to do but you know it's not done perfectly i could probably do a little bit better or they point out flaws in a certain dish without you know really just to kind of point out the flaw and seem intellectual um it, it, it's such a perfectly well done uh character that by the end of the movie really kind of just ties the whole premise together because soon enough, you find out that uh, everybody dining there, including the chefs and including the head chef too, they're all going to die. They're all going to get murdered because Mr. Head Chef thinks that everybody who's in that dining hall is somehow responsible for the death of his art, that being cooking. He thinks that everybody in that room has in some way contributed to his art form being commercialized and can't really find passion much in cooking anymore. Uh wow wow okay somebody clipped that <laughs> for me uh i that's okay sure sure 
I don't even think we got like a soul heart from that. I don't even know what that tinted rock dropped besides just a uh, a crawl space, but that's a it's a new one. I've seen the max I've seen in one room is three, but never two that close together. This this is quite the uh, accomplishment there. Anything you want to do here? Uh, you want to leave so you can get the penny here. So small optimization, but. Like, the food critic is responsible for the death because when she poorly reviews a restaurant, it causes chefs with great passion to go out of business and give up cooking forever. Uh, <laughs> the reason behind the movie star being there is also pretty funny because the only reason he's there is on the chef's one day off a couple years ago, he saw a movie the guy was in and it was a really bad movie and it ruined his entire day off. That's the reason why that guy's there. I thought it was just a hilarious like little bit to do. And it's like, his assistant is there, and he's like, well, why does she have to die? She didn't work on the movie. She's like a, a new hire. And he asks her, like, you go to college? And she was like, yeah. He goes, student loans? And she goes, no. And he goes, you're dying. Just, just like, it's not like it's super intelligent political commentary, but it's just funny enough for, you know, it, it, it has a place in the movie. And it's a funny movie, too. I mean, the entire, like, resolution to the conflict is making a, a very like regular american cheeseburger that's like the entire resolution of the movie i'm not gonna say how it plays out because it's pretty unexpected but like the final line like the chef speaks in the movie i think is like that is a cheeseburger <laughs> it's like one of his final lines it's just you know i i really enjoy movies like that i think barbarian and the menu um are are two similar works of art in the fact that they bring back the horror genre and combine it with comedy but it doesn't feel cheap like it still has a worthwhile story to tell along with being funny witty and you know a bit insightful it's it's genius and it makes me realize when, when i'm watching you watch a movie for entertainment and fun right my favorite movie of all time is a marriage story it's between that and the no country for old men um both which aren't like fun movies they're they're they have funny bits especially marriage story but they're mostly pretty depressing but you watch a movie for entertainment, and watching a fun movie is what really sticks with you. You know, th there's two ways a movie sticks with me. It's like either it was really insightful and it was, you know, it really makes you think and, and, and you know, look at things in a new light or changes the way you do something in your real life, or it was just a fantastic time to watch it and you had a great time laughing, whatever it may be. So I'm actually going to get an achievement here. I'm going to get to 99 cents and then just buy a bunch of items. I'll unlock Golden Razor that way, I believe. So that's my new plan right now. And I realized that out of all the movies I've seen in theaters this year, I think the first one I saw was like The Northman. Then it was The Batman. Um, I saw Top Gun Maverick. I saw... I'm going to see Tar soon as well, which looks really, really good. And apparently is also quite funny. Um, and... Also, Barbarian, Black Adam, Black Panther, and now the menu. And it made me realize I'm not gonna like give a review of Black or of uh, Black Panther on this channel because it's not worth it. Just very like, it, it wasn't. It was just whatever. It, like it wasn't good. It wasn't bad. Nothing stood out about it that made it like, you know, uh, a movie worth like really thinking about after you've watched it. I think. Um, so that's never gonna happen like here. I might give a quick thoughts. Like I thought it was just okay, but. Uh, out of every movie I've seen in theaters, the ones I've had the most fun watching are Barbarian, The Menu, and The Batman. And all of those are like, they come, they put the comedy genre in a place where it shouldn't be, which makes it all the more funny. Like, like, you know, Barbarian, for example, it's a horror story about a serial killer who's like, you know, inbreeding fucking monsters in his basement pretty metal concept right i probably should not have fought these guys huh uh but it's also like at the second or the half like i guess the midway point of the movie uh justin long hit that actor's character comes in and just delivers like one of the funniest performances of his entire career where instead of like trying to find out why there's a weird ass room in his airbnb he decides to because he owns this airbnb like it's a it's a rental property he bought to rent out he decides to look up if he can count basement square footage as part of like a rental plan or like he can sell it for even higher money instead of you know investigating the weird ass shit going on in his house it just it's 
it's perfect irony. It's really, really well done. And it makes you laugh, and it makes the rest of the movie just stick in your head that much longer. Menu's the same deal. There, There's, you know, plenty of scenes where you're like, man, this is pretty fucked up, but also, this is, like, really funny. Can I? I can afford this. I'll, I'll live. I'll live. Trust me. We get uh, luck down for damage and a leviathan. Lovely to see that. Next floor, we can spend all 99 of our cents and then be uh, be back in, in freaking action. I'm actually going to buy a key for that golden chest because we, have, we are rolling in the riches right now. No need. Okay, well, thank you for that five cent waste. But the Batman as well. It's not a horror movie at all. I wouldn't even really call it a thriller. That's, that's stretching it for sure. It's just like a... It's a, a an action movie with uh, a, a lot of comedy interwoven there. Um, and there are some themes that I might consider to be like a little bit on the horror side, sure. Uh, if you think it's a scary movie, I'm not going to say it's not because there are scenes that are a little bit, you know, uh, psychologically thrilling. But I wouldn't go as far as to call that movie as a genre, like a thriller or a horror movie. Because end of the day, it's like, it's a horror movie if you're like 14. <laughs> hey, extra life, baby. It's a horror movie if you're like 14 and it's your first time seeing a somewhat scary movie, which isn't bad. Like, you know, there's, you got to start somewhere, but uh, I wouldn't go as far as to call it in the grand scheme of like movies and cinema altogether a horror movie. But still, it, it's got aspects of it and it's really funny. I mean, the scene where they find the dude's like severed thumb in the car and... and attached to a flash drive and batman just goes thumb drive like it, it's it's fucking hilarious they know what makes these movies good I, I mean number one it is the best superhero movie ever released and i don't think there's it's hard to debate that based off how well it was made but you can make an uh, an assessment for iron man one being up there because iron man one is, is a is a damn good superhero movie into the spider verse is up there as well uh you know there there's other ones out there but it's it's well made now I think my favorite movie of the year, though, despite giving Batman and, and Menu and Barbarian that much praise, I still think out of 2022, everything I've seen this year... Oh, I saw Doctor Strange 2 as well. I gotta put that on the list. Everything I've seen this year, I still think The Northman is my favorite release. I like a good revenge story. My favorite book is The Count of Monte Cristo, which is like the quintessential revenge story. I mean... Dude literally buries a baby alive in his enemy's yard to get back at him. That's that's metal as hell. I, I love a good revenge story. And the Northman is like... It encompasses that drive to dedicate your entire life just to spite somebody. And the lengths you'll go to just to get back. I mean, it's well done. Also, funnily enough, Anya Taylor-Joy is also in that movie. So <laughs> maybe I'm just a big Anya Taylor-Joy fan, dude. Who knows anymore? But, uh, it's, it's, a vi it visually, it visually is, I think, the most interesting release of the year. I, th I like the, uh, the opening scene where they're panning down, um, from the volcano. Okay, we gotta spend 99 cents in this one room. I don't know if, uh, restock machines count for that money, so we're fun. <laughs> Oh, Papa's happy. How am I going to spend an awkward amount of four cents, dude? That's how you do it. Wow. We got Godhead from the fun guy thing. Isn't that something, man? <sighs> I mean, we actually could. Well, there's no need to knock out because we got to come back here and do greedier. So I'm not going to worry about like... But the machine clogs, we could use clicker. That's what I wanted. These are much harder characters to get it done as, and we can actually use these guys. Um, and then play Isaac again and not have the chance of, of, of um, what would the phrase be? Clogging up the greed machine. So I'm going to actually play as these guys. I know our HP is not looking astounding, but we have a lot of great items and scapular as well to help keep us alive for just a little bit, a tad bit longer, and a respawn as uh, the other guys. So I think we have a good amount of survi survivability. I gotta get these guys back. Yeah, there we go. Synced up there. But the Northmen, like, I'm very sad the Northmen didn't do great box office numbers. Because it's a movie 
that I think a lot more people would have enjoyed had the marketing started a bit sooner and it would have got more slots like like you know house slots in the theater um you can blame whatever you want for that but genuinely is like it's definitely top three of movies i've seen or that have released this year now i've seen a lot of movies this year that have come out in past times i saw for the first time uh one flew over the cuckoo's nest i saw um a marriage story for the first time this year as well what else did I see? I've, I've seen quite a bit. I've been kind of on a binge. I, Prey came out this year, the uh, the Predator prequel movie, which was also pretty good. Not really entirely my cup of tea, but, you know, I can see why others would really enjoy that franchise a lot. Uh, yeah, I need more, more stuff on you, brother. You got, like, nothing that augments your DPS besides Squeezy. And this shop is not really doing much for me either. Get, get synced up here, son. We'll go for the damage down. Put a bomb right here. Lovely. Akeldema is in the basement now. That's pretty swagger. We also, we got, I can't believe we got Godhead, dude. Godhead is now going to be in our very, very, very tiny angel pool. So, might be high time to start going for Mega Satan unlocks uh, as soon as we can. That way we can see Godhead more often by going into the uh, the angel rooms for the key pieces and things like that. So that's going to be a pretty a pretty nice bar to hit. Yum heart. Well, seeing as only one of us has more than one red heart container, um, my main guy is fight, so it goes to you. And I'm gonna actually I'm gonna do this. I don't trust that man's HP that much. And let's uh use one of those hearts to walk in. And then fly out. Oh. I guess I would I used the wrong guy to fly in, huh? I don't <laughs> my brain was not working at full capacity, let's be honest. Okay, you're not synced up. Yep. Big and Soured Greed Mode, everybody. My favorite mix. It's not that bad. I'm just I'm I'm the bad. I'm the one who's oh, I'm the one who knocks and is also bad. It's just hard to uh, get spacing in rooms like this. Gen not a genuine fan of Jacob Eni Sao, but I think, like, watch this. Is he dead? I guess he just died to something. I don't know what my my rival, uh, Mirror Man, died to, but he is dead. And one last succubus to go. But I saw a lot this year. This is the year I really got more into movies, and I'm really glad I did. Um, as every white boy in their 20s will eventually do. Getting really into, weirdly into movies for like a two year span of their life. But I'm glad I did because I've been really enjoying my dive into like, you know, what people consider classic directors or classic movies. And actually for the first time going into their just like their their uh, filmography and learning to appreciate it. Um, it. It's been really fun. What if we don't buy anything here because I don't really care for much. And we can just focus on trying to get damage. If we can get damage on our other guy, because our tier rate, I think, is... I, I guess we could go for a bit more tier rate. I, I mean, you're shooting f fine. You're doing fine. You have 3.4. I think it's, like, a little bit below average, but... Well, it is for sure. That's for sure. But I think, it, you know, it's mostly fine. Okay, that was a double bomb. Amazing. Can we get another one here, maybe? That was, like, perfect spacing. Grab your cash. Uh, I guess you do Devil Wave if you're really looking for more damage. It sucks. Uh, get some bombs in there for sure. Try and slow me down, asshole. Beautiful. We can get two bombs everywhere. Do you have a new attack? I think your your horse does something new. Yeah, our bombs are doing the majority of our damage right now. We're good, though. We're good. No damage in this fight. Hopefully, we can still get hit or tapped by a, a horseman, but I think we're fine. Okay. Um. We have no other guppy parts on us. But I'm going to put guppy... Because now if we die as either character, we will come back. 
We have respawns on both of our hitboxes here. We get one more guppy item on this run. Then... We get quite a bit of extra damage. Okay, this is going to be good. We, we want to roll this for sure. That's huge. I want to I wanna damage and I got two damage ups there. Mystery gift as well. Our tears like barely grew at all, I feel like, but whatever. Uh, mystery gift is, if we take that into our devil room, we could heighten our chance of seeing Guppy, so I think we'll do that. Uh, but for the time being, let's go fight our wave. I am a little bit nervous, so we could always try to use our um, clicker to get into Lilith or go back to Isaac if things get really dire. But we already kind of got a lot of achievements on the run, so I think I'd rather just stick it out and see if we can uh, bring it home as J&E. Although... I would like some more HP for J and E. It would be nice to live the Ultra Greed fight. We only have three and a half hearts. I guess there's only one phase, though. We're not fighting the, the golden variation. So, yeah, you know what? I think we... What? The fly has holy light? All right, dude. You know what? No, I, I accept it. I, I am... Accepting that my, my life has changed. Uh, flies now have holy light shots. Oh my god. Your guys' feathers need to calm the hell down. That's too many. Quite frankly, too many feathers. Do get synced back up. Going for the kill. There's only trites down there, which are fine. Just going hard. The fire's extinguished. Oh, hey. That was great for our, uh, our 120 volt action right there. As long as we get guppy. I want to buy it as as Flyman. There we go. Don't really care for that. Let's bomb these two fools. Um, I guess we can bomb rocks for crawl space. Wow. That was unexpected, but much appreciated. Capricorn. Okay. Fly guy. That's extra stats, especially damage and HP, the two most important stats right now. Uh, we'll do this. I don't care for any of these items, so we'll just use our final uh, restock for a, a bomb hit. Uh, okay, we have a soul heart stock. Keep that in mind. We're going to probably want to use that, I think, um, just to get a little bit more HP on our bottom guy. I guess our, we're kind of losing out on HP on both of our people. Big baby. Hell yeah, dude. That's what they called me in high school. Wow. 15, huh? We could buy an item now, but this is just much more worth it. Do it like that. Now I feel pretty confident here. We gotta fight the boss, and then we gotta fight uh, the Devil Wave to hopefully get Guppy. But then I think we have a run in the bag here. Which, hey, dude, you know, a half... Wow, you guys split a little bit too aggressively. I would say as Jacob Eni Sal, a half Jacob Eni Sal run, um, this is a pretty good greed victory to get. I forget if we get an unlock for beating regular greed, I'm pretty sure, is these two suckers, but... Um, and I guess it could literally be any. It could be a new character. It could be the beast door. It could be the door to mother. It could be the, uh, you know, any kind of alt path stuff. Oh, you have new attacks. I got to learn these. Oh, God. There is too much, right? What is happening? I'm supposed to dodge all of this? What do you mean? What? The, the reach... My god, we have one secret room to go for still. But damn, was that crazy. Oh, beautiful bomb right there. What is this? You're joshing. Jesus Christ, dude. How do we only put one bomb down there? You guys see that? Crazy. Okay. <laughs> Not touching that one. I honestly think Brimstone is... Costs us one heart. Sure, dude. Why not? Why not? Can I get one more? I can get a bunch of money in here if I'm real lucky. So first off, 
Where the hell is the secret room at, brother? Oh, it's off of the curse room, isn't it? Yikes. We get money for a soul heart there. Two soul hearts. I'll do it. You don't know what could be in here. Could be bombs. It is extra bombs. Um... I think I'd rather just keep safety scissors. All right, gamers. Nothing like crazy I'm, mix I'm missing here for like a, a hidden tinted rock or a super tinted rock. We don't have this unlocked yet, actually. Unrocked could be a haha, funny phrase. I'm nervous. I don't think we have the right build for this. Where is it? There's the... Oh, you dropped... Okay, well... I thought I was going to spawn at the top of the room. I was trying to bait out the trigger for that, but... Hey, we can't always be right, can we? You can mycosis shots on the... the okay, back it up, kid. You got infinite range. Use that to your advantage. But don't let too many things spawn here. Which ones? God damn it. God... Why? This fight's bad enough with one hitbox, man. Not again. Thank you for not being a hostile one at the very least. Three heals. It's a net loss for him right there. God damn it, dude. What? Oh my god. Greed, my friend. Be nicer. Spiders. Everywhere. Not again. Spin the wind, baby. All right, cool. Oh, no. Shit. <laughs> oh no. Okay, hold off one door and then stand where the door is. He's moving. He's moving. I think I missed. I actually just gave him health right there. There we go. We win. It's fine. We have no money for the machine. Why did I spend all of my money? I think winning was more important there. Pestilence Locust. Well, <laughs> we don't have any money for our machine. But we did get a greed unlock there. As Jacob and Esau. So I'm I'm not too upset about that. Now, because we don't have any money, there was no need to play as these two boys. But you know what? The mark is there. The mark is there. All right? Right? It's there? Yes. Okay. Well, if you enjoyed that run, we got Godhead. I can't be too mad about that. And a bunch of other stuff. Like and subscribe, whatever you want to do. I've been BD1P. I'll see you guys next time. Peace out and goodbye.